What's up, guys? It's Jonathan with Rev Free Moto. Today is August the 2nd, 2024. I had to think about it for a second. And I am on top of Cutter's Mountain currently. It is absolutely beautiful up here. It is a beautiful day to be out riding. And I am celebrating this month, August of 2024, I am celebrating nine years of freedom from alcohol addiction and also nine years of being able to defeat uh, a tobacco addiction too. I had a 12 year smokeless tobacco addiction and I had a, I can't rem exactly remember how many years I was addicted to alcohol. It was something like eight, nine, 10 years of my life that I was addicted to alcohol as a functioning alcoholic. And so it's been nine years uh, since August of 2015 that I have been able to uh, be free from alcohol addiction. And so I'm celebrating that today. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about that as uh, we descend down Carter's Mountain. But before we do, I wanted to show you a little bit around. So, well, first, here is the Fat Boy 114, which everyone's here to see more so than the, the mountains in the background, right? But the elevation here, I'm not sure exactly what it is. I'll have to look it up. But one of the higher points around this area, Albemarle County, Charlottesville, Virginia. And as you can see, we're definitely way high up and a beautiful view up here. You can also see that you have a lot of the radio towers and antennas up here on top of this mountain. And as we go down, you'll see that there is not only a vineyard here, but also an apple orchard. And so we have a beautiful view of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And then up top here, they have like the what they call the Apple Barn. And it's a beautiful place to, you know, gift shop. They also have in the uh, apple season, they have apple donuts and coffee and cider and things like that. So it's a uh, it's a popular place to come and just kind of hang out. And the crowds up here during the during the apple picking season can get uh, a little bit ridiculous. So it's actually not a place that I come during the apple season. But anyway, if you're ever in the Charlottesville area, it is a wonderful place to visit here in at Carter's Mountain. I do recommend it. Just uh, know that if you're coming during the apple picking season, it's extremely busy, sometimes to the point that it backs up traffic and they have flaggers directing traffic and everything like, everything like that. So today's a good day to be here. It's not too crowded here and we get to see some of the beautiful views. All right, let's ride and get on this motorcycle. It's a beautiful day to be out for a ride. Let's go. All right. I don't have a whole lot of fuel in my, in my gas tank. So uh, once I descend this mountain, I'll be heading right to a gas station. Indy Ridge. Uh, these are the Indy Ridge denim and uh, black leather, ventilated black leather gloves. So far they've been doing a pretty good job of keeping me cool today. Uh, and then I've got also my Indy Ridge boots on today that uh, the ventilated wingman collection. Yeah, keeping my feet cool so definitely not a Indy Ridge commercial but I am thankful to have good gear today. All right, let's go. It's just so beautiful up here. You look around and there's like literally birds riding on the, or gliding on the wind, I guess, at eye level, which is pretty cool. So up here at the top, you've got a vineyard. It didn't always used to be vineyards at the top. It used to be all apples. This whole mountain was apples up here. So now they have a vineyard on, on the very top, and then they've got the apple orchards as well. They have several different kinds of apple apples in their orchard. Um, I, my wife has a cousin and he has an allergy to apples. He can only eat one kind of apple. And the only apple that he can eat is, I think it's called a pink lady. And so he will, he draw, He lives in Williamsburg, which is about hour and 45 minutes, two hours away. But he will come here to this, this uh, apple orchard 
just to get some pink lady apples that are fresh during apple picking season. We usually get to see him around that time of year and his family. So shout out to you, Daniel, if you're watching. And you're, we're glad to have you come up and join us at the Carter Mountain Orchard. This road uh, did not always used to be paved. It used to be dirt the whole way up. And so it is very nice that they have paved it. I think that really helped with their customers because this place is super popular. Super popular. They uh, they get a lot of visitors every year, uh, year round. Um, seasonally, they probably do close at some point. I don't know, but I think that the views up here are so wonderful that people just love to come up here. And then it, it this road actually intersects with the uh, Carter's Mountain Trail which starts at the bottom of Route 53, Route 53, which is Thomas Jefferson Parkway. Uh, and uh, it actually, it's like a two mile trail that goes all the way up to the, where the Thomas Jefferson's Monticello is. So I'll show you that trail. We'll see parts of it in just a moment here. Yeah, according to my reserve tank, I think I had well, going up the mountain, I had a lot less. Now my gas light's completely off, so maybe I'm not in bad, as bad of a shape. Maybe it was just going up the mountain that sloshed all the fuel away from the fuel sensor. It's had a little backfire. This thing, a little diesel pop. Running the uh, Vance and Hines Eliminator PCX 300s on this Harley and it has been tuned. I've got a I've got the Harley tuner. But every now and then this much downshifting. You're gonna have a D cell pop. Uh, so here is the an intersection with the trail and this is uh, where the trail goes up and it's a beautiful trail it goes all the way up the mountainside and not extremely steep but But yeah, as I said, uh, I am celebrating nine years this month, nine years of sobriety. So nine years of being free from uh, alcohol and also tobacco. So I'm thankful to be celebrating that. You know, it's uh, one thing that somebody that maybe just starting out in their sobriety journey or maybe hasn't even uh, started their sobriety journey yet may wonder if you know years later down the road is do I even think about you know like when times get tough am I like man I really wish I you know, had a drink and um, I have elected to completely stay away from alcohol. Like, I don't touch it at all. It's, uh, to me, it's like playing with matches, you know, in a uh, room full of gasoline, cans of gasoline. Uh, I had a problem with alcohol for many, many years. And so I don't want to mess around with it. Uh, I don't, it's not that I don't know that I can handle a beer every now and then, but something that ruled my life for so long to the point that I was spending $300, $350 a month and that was 10 years ago, nine years ago, you know, now it would probably be $500 a month, but, you know, I was spending a large amount of money on alcohol every single month, every day, you know, I was drinking. Um, and so, like, I don't want to even bring it back to, into my life at all. I'd much rather ride a Harley and spend that money on a Harley Davidson motorcycle, you know, or a motorcycle, or, you know, take the kids on vacation. You know, now that I've been freed from alcohol, I've been able to uh, focus on my career, my family, and uh, now I have three beautiful children. By the grace of God, I'm still married for 20 years, and like, those are the things that matter now, not, not alcohol. And so I don't even think about it at all. Uh, I don't think about, the only time I ever think about it is when I see somebody else 
who is struggling and how much I want to help them. You know, I, I don't think about, uh, you know, that I uh, that I wish I had a drink and that I could go back to that. I don't I don't think about that at all. Um, tobacco is uh, something else that, like, you know, I, I dipped. I used smokeless tobacco for many years, and uh, a few months after I gave up alcohol, uh, I felt like I didn't really need the tobacco anymore, and so I gave that up. And I don't really think about that anymore either. So it's like, what do you do when you get stressed? Like, you know, everybody's got a vice, right? And, you know, that's that's true and that's not true. You know, I, trust me, I, I enjoy ice cream. I, I would say that ice cream is probably my, my vice. <laughs> um, but I also exercise, like, so they kind of cancel each other out. To me, the healthiest thing I can do when I'm stressed is get out here and ride or hit the gym. Like find those healthy uh, coping mechanisms, and you know lean on those. And uh, you know above all, you know uh, uh, faith in God helps me too. That may not be your thing, um, but it does help me. Uh, and I'll tell you why, just real quick. So faith in a higher power helps me to kind of feel like I don't have to be in control of everything. So I like to say like faith, uh, ultimate control is above my pay grade so yeah um it, i just wanted to say like if i'm if i had never uh gotten a handle on it uh never uh stopped drinking i kind of want to turn here because i want to sit at this light but yeah i think i'm going to turn if i'd never kind of gotten a handle on my life and turn my life around and, and, and gotten rid of alcohol uh, that held me in chains for so long. Uh, I don't think I'd be uh, even here today. I don't know that, I, that I'd be here today as far as like I struggled with post-traumatic stress, depression, and uh, even suicidal ideations. So I don't know that I would be here today, number one. Number two, I, I don't know uh, that I would be the person that I am today. You know, I used to be a jerk, uh, a really uh, cynical, bitter, impatient, irritable, uh, just jerk. Uh, I think that's the best way to, to describe it. And uh, today, I'm not saying that I don't have my moments, because just ask my wife, I can be hard to be around, especially when, they're, when I'm super stressed. But, um, at least now I know how to get rid of that stress in healthy ways. Um, so I really think I have a lot more compassion with people as well. Uh, you know, I have a lot more patience with people. My fuse is just a little bit longer. This is, uh, we're in the Charlottesville, city of Charlottesville now. And so you know, I, I would say that being free from substance abuse, being few, free from alcohol, has really changed who I am and uh, given me some gratitude for, the, for, for, for a second chance at life. I really try to live my life with gratitude and, and be thankful uh, that I can be out here uh, living my life uh, in this beautiful world on this amazing motorcycle riding today you know just little things like that and um, be thankful that I'm still here be thankful that I have three beautiful children and I have an amazing wife who loves me uh, who I honestly uh, don't deserve you know and, and you know so there's a lot of grace a lot of grace uh, and I'm just want to that's really how I want to live my life every day is be thankful and be thankful for the the life that I have so you know I'd love to hear from you uh, if you are in, early in your sobriety journey your recovery journey you know uh, what's what happened to you that you know maybe you turned to that in the first place you know for me uh, I lost my father when I was 12 years old I watched him um, battle cancer for 13 months and I watched him die you know in our home and so like that 
was extremely traumatic and then uh, piled on a whole bunch more trauma when I be, uh, became a first responder, became a police officer. So it was, uh, I struggled for many, many years and I always thought that I was the only one that couldn't handle life. I always felt like I was somehow broken or different than everybody else. And, um, you know, th there's actually a scientific word for that. It's called the fallacy of uniqueness. The fallacy of uniqueness. And, you know, where, you th where we all think that when we're going through something extremely difficult, that we feel like we are the only one. And that is so not true. So not the case. Uh, and so I would just encourage you, like, if you're struggling today, which a lot of people are every day, with different things if you're struggling today and I'm not perfect I don't know everything but I have defeated a lot of demons in my life so just know there's hope that that the reason that you're facing that you even turn to these things drugs alcohol um, unhealthy habits could be obesity right the reason we turn to these things because is because we're in pain and we're trying to figure life out on our own and we think we're the only ones. And the, the there's nothing that could be further from the truth. So be courageous, be strong, and take those first steps to walk away from addiction, from alcohol, even if you need to go and get help to do it. You know, I didn't do it alone. I had a lot of therapies, a lot. I went to a men's group um, for many, many years. So there was talk therapy. I went to see a police psychologist for several months I went to see a, a counselor with my wife and that was all about me not 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 the marriage that was all about me you know screw, uh, fixing all you know facing all the trauma that I had faced and never uh, that I had faced in my life and never uh, talked it out never actually resolved any of it so I was just carrying it around like it's like trauma is like um, carrying a heavy load with you if you've got um, trauma something traumatic in your life but it's like you take a, a backpack and you throw a big heavy rock into that backpack and you just carry that big heavy rock around and every time there's something new another trauma it's another rock until you're carrying around so many rocks that you they, it crushes you that's trauma so what trauma have you faced in your life that's unresolved? Because if you don't resolve it, if you don't face it in healthy ways, you don't talk it out with somebody, then it will crush you. It will crush you. So I'm gonna celebrate my nine month anniversary by nine month, nine year <laughs> anniversary of sobriety by going in and getting a cold soda and uh, ride home and en enjoy the rest of my day. So I just want to say if you're struggling today that you're not alone and that there's help for you and there's hope. So God bless. We'll see you in the next video. And remember, it's who you're becoming. That's what matters most. Thanks so much for watching. Please. Don't forget to subscribe to Referee Moto and like this video. It really, really helps me out. Appreciate you. God bless.